Dear students, in this class I will teach you how comparatives and superlatives work and are formed in Spanish. And I will also teach you how diminutives work in Spanish. I probably taught this along my course in a few of our lessons, but this is going to be the first time I will be teaching this whole topic all together uh, concentrated in one class. So it's a very easy topic, but you have to know it in order to use it. So let's begin with comparative and superlative. In Spanish it's easier, in my opinion, than it is in English. In English we use the er and est uh, suffix for comparative and superlative, right? For example, big is the adjective, this would be bigger for the comparative and the biggest for the superlative, okay? In Spanish, the adjective remains the same, it doesn't change. We just add the word mas, which means more, before the adjective. So, for example, if we have the adjective fast, okay, which is rápido, rápido, rápido means fast, okay? So, in English, the comparative would be faster, okay? In Spanish, we just add más, más, rápido, for faster, okay? Now, the superlative would be the same, but we just add the, the article before, at the beginning, okay? Like this, el más rápido for the fastest so you see how straightforward this is in the same way that in English for the superlative you add the article before the superlative in Spanish you also add the article right before más rápido Okay? Of course, in Spanish we have feminine and masculine articles. Therefore, depending on the thing we are talking about, if it's um, masculine, it will be el. If it is feminine, it will be la. Okay? So, for example, the word for car, auto, is masculine. So, the fastest car would be el auto más rápido, ok? El auto más rápido. Of course, if we are including the, the noun, ok? If the noun is going to be included in the sentence or the phrase, then the noun will go after, immediately after the article, okay? This is exactly the same as saying the fastest car. Car. Now, let's change the noun for a feminine noun. For example, the word bicycle, bicicleta, which is feminine as, uh, as uh, all nouns in Spanish that end with letter A, right, it is feminine. So, the fastest bicycle would be la bicicleta más rápida. Okay? 
la bicicleta más rápida for the fastest bicycle, ok? Bicycle, right? Sorry. Bicycle, ok? Good. Same as in English, we have the short form of bicycle, which is bike, ok? In Spanish, we also have the short form of, bike, of bicicleta, which is BC, ok? BC is bike. So, la bicicleta más rápida, the, fast, the fastest bike, or bicycle, el auto más rápido, the fastest car. Now, let's omit, let's uh, leave outside the, the noun, the object. So, we'll just say the fastest, okay? Let's just leave out the word car. This is the fastest. In Spanish, we leave out auto. Este es, for this is, el más rápido, okay? For example, este es el más rápido. Rápido, which is this one is the fastest. Okay, so este is this one. Es is the verb to be, is. El más rápido, the fastest. So that's how the superlative works in Spanish. Let's see the comparative with a couple of examples. It's as easy as the superlative, or even easier, because we don't even add the article. Okay? So, we just leave the word más, which means more, before the adjective. So, for example, if we want to say El auto rojo es más lento que el auto azul el auto rojo es más lento means slower because lento is the adjective in Spanish for slow in English this means sorry let me erase this the red car is slower than the blue car or than the blue one okay so el auto rojo is the red car Okay? Remember in Spanish, we usually, or I would say always, uh, generally, um, the, the noun goes before the adjective, right? So first the noun, later the adjective. In, in, in English, first the adjective, later the noun. So, the red car, el auto rojo, is, is, slower, más lento, right? Que is the comparative, then, right? Don't uh, mistake this with que. The que with a tilde means 
what. Okay? What. But this k without the tilde means then for comparative. El auto azul. The blue car. Now, since I already I'm already talking about the car, so I can omit the word car and I, I simply say el auto rojo es más lento que el azul and I don't need to repeat the word auto. This is the same as saying in English the red car is slower than the blue one, okay? As in English we can also say the red car is slower than the blue car or slower than the blue one, okay? So, más lento, slower. El más lento, the slowest. So this is how comparative works in Spanish. So, so easy. Now, I will show you how diminutive works in Spanish. In English, we have diminutives, right? It works by adding the Y at the end of the noun, okay? Only that I think it doesn't work for most of the nouns, okay? So, it works for bird because you say birdie, okay? It works for dog because you say doggy, okay? And it works for another few nouns, but you cannot say a boy, a girly, girly I think you do say, right? A sofa, -y, a table, -y, right? Doesn't work. Just say a, a tiny table, a tiny sofa, okay? In Spanish, the rule for the diminutive works for all the nouns. So, the diminutives in Spanish it, it's adding this suffix, ito, if it is masculine, or ita, if it is feminine, okay? For masculine and for feminine. So now let's think of any uh, noun. For example, the noun perro, which means dog, okay? Perro would be, if it is a he dog, a male, it is perrito. If it is a, a she dog, a female, it is perrita. Okay? This is a diminutive, okay? Because the word for dog is perro, the word for bitch or the she dog is perra, okay? But the diminutives are perrito for a doggy, for a a male doggy and a female doggy would, would be perrita. Any other noun for cat? Gato would be gatito for a male cat. Gata would be gatita. Can you see that the last uh, vowel that uh, that indicates whether it's male or female, or masculine or feminine word, is deleted, right? Got, we don't say gatoito or gatoita. We, we get rid of the last vowel. Let's take any other uh, noun. For example, sofa. The word for sofa in Spanish is sofa. So similar to English, sofa. Okay, now look at this. Sofa would be irregular because it adds a letter C. We don't say sofito. We say sofacito. Okay? Sofacito. You don't have to learn the irregulars and all that because the diminutives is something really not so relevant for somebody that's learning Spanish, right? 
but I just want you to see how this rule of adding ITO or ITA in Spanish applies to absolutely all the nouns, all the objects, okay? So everything can be turned in Spanish to a diminutive. Boy, for example, sorry, boy, this is in English, boy. In Spanish, boy is niño, okay? And girl is niña. So a tiny boy would be niñito. Un niñito, a little boy. Or niña would be una niñita. Okay? For a girly, little girl, tiny girl. So, not necessarily it means small in size or in age, although usually it would. In Spanish, the diminutive is also used as um, when we uh, love or cherish somebody very much. Sometimes we turn somebody's uh, name into a diminutive. For example, let's say I have uh, a friend, a very, very, very close friend of mine, for example, called Pedro, right? Pedro is Peter for Spanish, in Spanish, okay? So let's say that my friend Pedro and I, we are very close friends since we were three years old, okay? So we're, we're very special friends. So since I know him for s such a long time, then I usually call him Pedrito, right? Pedrito. Doesn't mean that he's a tiny guy. It means like uh, something from the heart, you know? It's a, it's a, a likable a way of uh, addressing somebody. Okay? Of course, it's very informal and, uh, and you wouldn't do it in a formal situation. Okay? Well, this is all about comparative, superlative and diminutive in Spanish. I hope you enjoyed the class. If you have any questions, you can write to me. I will answer all your doubts. Remember, go to my website to find the full index of lessons. There you will find all my classes in order, numerical order. And you will also find all the tests and quizzes for each one of my uh, Spanish classes. Okay, so I strongly recommend you to go my website and try do those tests to exercise to practice and that will help you take in all these new concepts and uh, and teachings okay so thank you if you like the video just click a like a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my channels still better so thanks and I'll see you in the next class goodbye